Oh, bad timing. Bad. Oh no, I'm gonna die. No, 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 no. Oh, switch gun. Kaboom. Whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome to Seven Days to Die, the ultimate zombie survival game where you must explore and loot and fight your way to survive the unsurvivable. On every seventh night in this wasteland, the sun sets and a blood moon rises which turns the zombies feral and you have to somehow survive the night from the massive horde who will do anything in their power to get to you. And let me tell you, they will get to you one way or another. Okay, here we go, day one. I spawned in on the zombie infested land and immediately looted this bird's nest which was right next to me before I started beginning the tutorials. I collected plant fibres and made a bedroll which I placed down and then picked up immediately. I collected stone, looted some more stuff and then made myself a stone axe which I used to chop down a tree to get wood to make a club. I hit a rock to get more stone to make a bow and arrows before hitting this tree again to get a building block and a campfire and the quick tutorial was over. Now it was time though to travel one kilometre on foot to the nearest trader, but I first stopped off at this house nearby to see if it had any loot for me. I read some books and heard my very first zombie. He was no match for me and my burning stick. Once it was down, I knocked down a door to access some more stuff. Some medical stuff in here. What's this? Ooh. And with the house raided, I began my journey to the trader, while seeing a few more friendly figures and looting some more birds nests. I opened the gate and met with Trader Joel, but I quickly left as I had something else planned. I quickly spotted this gyrocopter at the trader though, and it made me realise that getting this was the number one priority in these 100 days. I continued my journey down Southfish and finally found it, the big city. Oh, there it is. I got to it, but I was kind of unsure where I had planned to go in the city, as I'm not sure where it was. Here we go, Trader Jen. I entered, spoke with Jen, and got my very first job, only a few hundred meters away. Oh, I would kiss you, but, um, you know, apocalypse hygiene and all. Just outside, I had to clear a couple zombies, who had obviously been following me this whole way. Ow. Before I began to chop down a tree to get wood so I could craft a couple building blocks, place them down right outside this trader and upgrade them to wood quality. I placed down a bed and a storage box and I would call this base for the time being. I made as many arrows as I could and then headed out over to the wet's residence to do the job. I found that I could sneak around and avoid detection from the zombies which also made my arrows do more damage in the process which was super helpful. How did he not see me? I then clubbed this one to death and got some more loot before entering the attic to find more zombies. I took one out with a simple headshot and then was able to loot these medical supplies. I took out a couple more zombies and I was able to get my hands on the final loot of the job but I was still missing the supplies which I needed to find. Lucky for me though, they were just underneath the floor so I was able to easily get them. I brought the supplies back to Trader Jen and was able to exchange them for 330 dukes this is the currency that's in 7 days to die, and a reward of my choice. I changed the magazine bundle as learning all of them would come handy later in the video. I also quickly selected another job to do, but as I was leaving I noticed it was getting quite late so I had to rush over to go do it. I got to Bo's market and entered the caravan and started looting everything as I'm a noob and everything seems good to me at this point. I found a zombie hidden in a closet yet was somehow able to shoot it open and then kill it without it ever aggroing onto me. And doing all of this had drawn in a spectator, who I swiftly killed. I made my way down this hatch and into some sort of bunker, and took out a couple more zombies and got myself some good food in this loot. While searching for more zombies, one had actually detected my presence this time and began fighting back, but I killed it. I noticed that I had gotten quite a few skill points already, and decided to put these points into strength and into the pack mule trait so I could carry more items in my inventory, a go to perk early in the game in my opinion. Before I went back to looting up more and killing some more, but as soon as the hour hit 2200 I ran into the final few zombies who were now super quick and I began panicking as I didn't want to die so early. Get off me, get off me, go, 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 go. Turned out that once the time hit 2200 
zombies became even quicker than what they were during the day. But that was no problem for me as I was able to kill the remaining few as I was able to complete the mission. But I did have to bandage up as I did get a bit hurt. Hello. I finished up getting the rest of the loot and returned to my so called base to wait till the trader opened in the morning. As I waited for the trader to open, I looted some feathers from a nest and found some stone so I could make even more arrows, the primary use of weapon for now. But I did end up running into a zombie who managed to give me an infection. I cleared this orange zombie and looted the ambulance which I hoped would have something to help cure the infection, but it didn't. But soon the trader opened and I was able to claim my reward, which I chose the assault rifle ammo because I'm probably going to need quite a lot of that later on. I checked Jen's shop and she had honey which I bought and used to cure my infection. I quickly chose another job to do as these are the best things to do in the early game to build up loot, ammo and skill points. But one issue I did have with this one was it was so dark inside yet it was still 8am. I was fighting the zombies blind until I began fighting with my burning stick and everything was okay. I got the white river supplies and then found the final room with the last remaining zombies who I took out one by one. I rummaged through the loot and basically taking all of it and returned to Jen to claim my prize. And obviously I chose a shotgun ammo, despite having no shotgun yet. I accepted another job and started it. Oh. I got to the loot already. I left, returned to the station and started. Ow. The hell? Having not realised that standing on a campfire can burn you, I got all the loot before getting some more ammo and starting my fourth mission of the day. With the zombies cleared, I got the loot and the satchel, but as I ran back out to the trader, I noticed I only had 40 minutes to run back, just under 400 metres. Yeah, we ain't making this. So I waited the night out and farmed some trees to get wood whilst I waited. As well as stumbling across this little farm, where I could harvest these bushes to get some stuff which would help me later on. Because, you know, in a zombie apocalypse, you just gotta take whatever you can find. We've all been there. Once the trader was opened, I received some more AR ammo and bought water using my hard earned jukes as I was thirsty and had none spare. And it also turned out that that last mission wasn't the last tier one, there were many more. So I went over to the passing gas store. Oh, and it's over. Let's go. As I looted up, I soon found it wasn't actually over. Ah, uh, now it is. As I returned to the trader, this time got 9mm ammo. But more importantly, I had completed the tier 1 missions and got the bicycle as the end of tier reward. Which was a timely addition as my next mission was almost a kilometre away in the city. The mission was to actually open up a trader route with Trader Hugh, who turned out to be the ammo guy of the map. And as well as that, he had a lot of feathers which I bought as they would be helpful making more arrows, which was my ammo for the time being. I had no interest in doing Trader Hugh's jobs though, so I left. And back I went to my one and only Trader Jen. But when I did get back to Trader Gen, I was hoping to start the Tier 2 missions, as I thought getting the bicycle was the reward for completing the Tier 1 missions. But I still had more to do apparently. So I got them underway. With one completed, I exchanged it for a magazine bundle and soon started the second job. Yo! First time we got this, nice! With the satchel now in my possession, I got through the loot which wasn't half bad with some good scrap armour pieces and some more books which I'll never say no to. But it was now midnight and I couldn't see the trader, so whilst I waited I sorted out my storage and for being on the fourth day I think I've got some quite good loot already. But I didn't just want my base to be a couple blocks, so I went out to look for something closer to the trader and something better and I found this building called the Fermio Residence which looked quite good and it was super close to the trader. So I knocked down the front door, only to find that it already had a few occupants inside. But thankfully, they weren't too much of a problem to take out. Oh, there's one more here. Yeah? Goodbye. I finished up killing the zombies and looting all the stuff in the house, 
I headed on over to the trader who had now opened. I opened another magazine bundle and started yet another mission. And over I went to the mason's barn. Oh, I missed. But this should be quite easy with them all out in the open. No secret ones hiding. Ooh, some good loot. Jeez, it's dark up here. Oh, hello. Let me loot this quickly. Putting it on fire is the only way I can see where it is, man. The hell's this? Oh, yeah. Pipe gun. Let's go. Alright, back to the trader we go. I knew you hmm. Let's take the ammo. Damn, I only just realised I'm making 1,400 dukes per job now. So off I went to do my next job. Ow. Well, that didn't take long. That's work. There you go, Jenny. I'll take some steel. I remember that supply of honey that Jen supposedly had a few days ago. Well, it was all gone. I didn't buy it. And I needed it badly. At base, I had vitamins which got rid of one of them. But I still had the infection to deal with. So I had to soldier on Hello. and headed over to do my next mission. But as I headed inside, I heard dogs. So I ran. I managed to close the door and hide. Oh, bad timing. But I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. What happened? I got stuck. It only taken me four days to get my first death. And I was hoping to last a little bit longer, but oh well. I got back to my stuff with the dogs no longer being there. Probably dung to the fire as well, but that death also meant I'd failed my first job. But whilst all the chaos happened, a supply shop had spawned nearby, only a few hundred meters away. So I went over. Ooh, what have we got? Oh, nice. Oh, this is book heaven. I got back to Jen and the only jobs she had available for me were night ones. And the night time meant it was more difficult as zombies are quicker. Alright, here we go. Oh, dear. Oh, no, not that one. Oh, no. This is one of the orange-eyed variants, which are both stronger and quicker. Yeah. Ah. Why are there so many? Run! Oh, that didn't work. Let's go. The zombies at night in this mission were crazy, but at least they were down and it was time to loot up. I then made my way towards the trader to retrieve my goods, which I chose to be these 25 pieces of steel. I checked Jen's inventory again to try and see if there was honey, but there was none. So I left to take on my next job. I probably would need that baton from now on as these missions were getting harder and harder every single time. Ooh, we need this. After losing it, I returned to the trader to get either a hunting rifle or steel. So I chose the magazine bundle. I don't know why. But I soon headed out to take on the next job, the fire station. This is so much better. And this was the job which I needed as I was rewarded with antibiotics. So I could finally get rid of the annoying infection I had. I immediately ate one of those guys and finally my infection was being cured. And it was time to do another job. Alright, we'll take some more ammo. Ooh. 
A workbench or a mini bike bundle? Oh, that's tough, I don't know. Um, no, I still need the chassis. And I'm not high enough level to get it yet. It was time to take a break from the job hunting and go back to the house. I wanted to make my base. As I entered and began to destroy some of the decor inside, I put down a few storage boxes and then began to take down some of the other stuff in the room. What? I wasn't even looking. <laughs> It's orange! It's orange! I managed to bring some stuff over and organise the boxes properly before I went back to deal with this orange zombie in an unorthodox way. Who's there? Oh no. Oh, I, oh that's an army. That's an army. Hurry. Hurry. And then I finished bringing over the rest of the stuff. I quickly got rid of a small incoming army and then Howdy. set off to open a trade room. I took this opportunity to buy a bellow and a water filter as it was the first time I saw either of them and I'd need them later for sure. As I then set off back home to take on a tier 3 job. And we got it. I got a steel pickaxe, something which would come in quite handy when I started farming. But little did I know that a horde had slowly been approaching my position. And it's over. Nice. The La Grega Residence. In we go. Ooh, a pipe pistol. Nice. Having got to the final room, I managed to get this metal box with just one pick. Got the White River Satchel as well as the rest of the loot before leaving and exchanging to get the magazine bundle again. There happened to be a nighttime job, so I accepted that and went over to do it. What the hell? Oh dear. Right, bring it. Oh no. That explosion woke everything, so instead of fighting, I just booked it away on my bike. This fence is OP. Oh, maybe not next to me. Power is now alive. Last one's got to be in here, no? What? It's a, it's a pig. Why is the pig mad at me? really hate the dogs on this game, man. After aimlessly searching and trying to get out this ladder which I thought was the right way, I eventually found the ladder which led me to the next section. From the ladder I jumped over into the barn and let the die know that chaos was about to ensue. Right, there's one there. Oh, that's quite a few of them. Right, oh, as a bird. Kill the bird, okay. Oh, it's they're all the big ones as well. Wait, why are you quick? Oh no! Oof. How did I not get hit there? How many times does this big one would be hit though? And still none of them are down. Come on now! Is it dead? No, it's not dead. Is that one dead? No. How? And it's still not dead. There we go. Alright, that's two. Come on, just the last one. Just the last one. Is it... No? How's it surviving these? And I've missed... Oh, and I fell. Oh, no. And I've missed again. What am I doing? And it's done at least. Part of the loot was this reinforced chest, which I tried to open with just two picks, but they both broke. As I finished up getting the rest of the loot, I set off back to the trader. Oh, a steel axe. We'll take that. 
In this store I bought a couple things such as a beaker, antibiotics and honey as I struggle so much with the infections on this game. And who would have thought it, it's a zombie survival game after all. But as I left the trader I saw one thing, it was horde day. So instead of jobs I did a bit of preparation as I placed a campfire and used the beaker that I had just bought with a grill that I would found earlier on. Next I moved on to try and make myself a couple of these dew collectors as I had the water filters but I only had 90 scrap polymer and you needed at least 100 just to make one. But my preparations were then interrupted as a zombie walked up to my base. I quickly popped over to Trader Jen to see if she had any scrap polymer. She did have these car books which I bought as I wanted to get the gyrocopter but unfortunately she didn't have any of the scrap polymer that I wanted. I had seen online that getting rid of tyres and stuff like this with a range could give you scrap polymers. Oh we got an airdrop. Let's go. I hit a couple more tyres to get the remaining scrap polymer. I've got all the stuff. Oh, can I not craft it? Yes. Yes, you can, you moron. Just press the craft button right here. But before I got about crafting the Jew Collector in the workstation, which I didn't need to do, I went over to get this airdrop, which gave me some good loot. Despite not having the workstation, which you definitely didn't need, I packed up all the things and waited until I had a workstation to craft the Jew Collectors. With Horde Night just around the corner, I cooked up this murky water and turned it into water in the campfire before I then set out to make a very basic Horde Knight base. Whoa, how did, how did I break that? I guess this axe doesn't upgrade them then. I quickly got the stone and then crafted the axe which didn't break them. Oh no. Oh no, bad timing. Oh, reload, reload. No. Oh, I'm at reload again. Oh, what is, why? Bad things. Bad things. Oh, that was bad. Despite that mini pre-horde night attack from the dogs, I continued hard at work to get this base ready for the horde. But the base building was cut short as I ran out I of wood, wood and I Oops. had none spare. With it almost being horde night time, I finished upgrading the buildings and don't bully me for this, it's not the best base design and I only had one day to do it because I kind of forgot it was day 7. But we move. Alright, bring it, it's 10pm, let's go. Oh, I'm kind of nervous for this. It's only the first one, hello. Oh, headshot, first shot, let's go. I can't hit my shots, okay. Um, quite a few of them are like falling off. Okay, let's reload. It's, it's, it's not bad so far. Oh, I can't hit my shots. Oh, that one fell. Well. Oh, wait, how did he get on top? What? Oh, oh no, oh, oh okay. Well, I'm so glad I built this, like the fallback feature. Oh, that's quite a few of them. Build, build, there we go. Oh, uh, what? Bro, how are they getting on top? Oh no, oh, I'm, I'm a gun's broke. Um, and how, how how are you on top? Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Run! No! Oh, ow! Ow! Go! Go on! Oh, it's not even midnight yet. Oh no, we've only been going not even two hours and the base has already failed. No! <laughs> no! Oh no! I don't think that I can. I don't think they can hit me when I'm just like riding about. So we'll just do this for the rest of the horde night. This plan was going brilliantly until I decided to be stupid and got off my bike. Oh, what a shot! Ow! 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 No! No! No way! No! 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 I can't move! Oh! No. Oh, that's, oh, why did I even get off the bike? Oh, I'm an idiot. I, uh, I'm an idiot. I spawned back in nearby and got back to my loot. 
to find that the zombies had disappeared and some of them have even dropped loot bags and I didn't kill them. All I've done is just spawn back in. But I'll take it. As that horde night has shown that it was a massive failure and that I just wasn't prepared, I thought it was time to forget the missions and start base building as I tried to craft myself a forge. I already had most of the materials in my base already, so it was just a matter of chopping down a tree to get the wood to create the wooden logs and then I was able to craft two forges. I placed them down side by side and immediately looked at what I needed for the workbench. I needed forged iron and luckily I already had some but I was still seven short. I went out to get wood so that I could make the workbenches later as well as power the forges so I could smelt. I didn't have much clay for it though so I had to go out with a spade and dig up a bunch of dirt to get some. With the clay I just collected I was able to make the final few nail and the workbench could now be crafted but it would take six minutes. Whilst it crafted, I went around my house to find some zombies upstairs living rent free. They weren't around for much longer though. Ooh, nice. Oh, not more dogs. Oh, oh, how were they hit? Oh no, that's a bad time to reload. Oh, where did they come from? Finally, the workbench was crafted and placed, and I was finally able to make a door so that I would stop intruders getting into my house. I also made and placed down a dew collector, which meant I had infinite water, as well as making myself a better pipe machine gun. As it was getting quite late, I decided to not go and do the mission that I wanted to do. Instead, I went to the Cracker Book Cafe, which was infested with zombies, but clearing them out was easy. But the importance of this place is that it's filled with books, which helps you progress their levels and get higher, better stuff. I then ran into a problem as it was now 3 o'clock on day 9 and I forgot to record me going doing the mission but I'm now back at base returning the items that I'd looted. From the job, which I didn't record me doing, I did manage to get this compound crossbow at tier 3 which was quite a nice find and I thought I'd test it out by taking on the Ziegler residence. Oh, that's a lot of zombies. Guess he's the gun for this. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Oh, I need to reload. Oh, stop attacking. Oh, okay, nice one, crossbow. Ah, oh, this isn't good, I'm in the corner. Get it, get it. Oh, I can barely see, but get it, get it. Go on. Get him. Oh, oh, that's, oh I'm out of stamina. Oh, no. Get me out. Get me out. What is, I can't see. There we go. How, the, how am I out? Uh, now I can see. Okay. Ow. Oh, I've got 15 health. I've got 15 health. Oh. Ow. That's the last one. Huh? Things back at base weren't much better, as a whole entire army decided to descend onto my base. From the job I just completed, I got a tier 5 pistol, as well as another job at the Cracker Book Cafe, which I literally just looted, and that meant the loot would respawn. But doing this mission was the jackpot. Not only did I learn the books, but once I returned to Gen, I was able to progress onto the next tier, and I got the end of tier loot, which gave me a chemistry station. As I went to open the trade route, I found the supply drop on top of a building and this trader did have some stuff for me as I bought some honey and an anvil and when I eventually got back to base late that night I did the world's most boring task of collecting clay. I had this treasure map lying around at base so I thought it was finally time to crack on with that. I headed out to the area and began digging and inside there was actually some decent loot so it was worthwhile. With the loot done I'm in my way back into the big city to take on the post office tier 3 infested area mission. Oh, oh hello. Oh, that's quite a few of you. There's this ATM which I broke my way into, and let's just say I got a lovely payday with a thousand dollars inside. Oh, oh, it's a green one. Oh, oh, no. Oh, it's a green one. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Um, oh, my gun's broke. Oh, my gun's broke. Oh, Ah, oh, this is real bad now. Where did they go? Wait, am I meant to go this way? Oh, I don't know. I was able to kill the big green zombie 
as well as finds a couple metal pipes which repaired my pipe machine gun. But that was only the start of it. Oh my god. Oh, oh, it's a green. Oh. Right, shoot it. Come on, reload. Yeet, yeet. Oh no. Oh, I, I'm going to die here. Oh, I've got one health. I've got one health. How did I get out? How on earth have I just got out of that? Alright, there's one more there. Okay. Is that the final one? What? How did he kill me? It was under the desk. What? I was able to get my stuff back and killed the final zombie. But looting the rewards, it just didn't have that feeling towards it because I had lost the mission. But this fail only made me want to complete another job. So I went and did one. Uh, what? Where'd it, where'd it go? Bro, I, s I swear it's right here. What the hell? How's it, how's it just spawned back? What? With that job done, and it being midnight, which meant I was unable to get to the trailer to get my reward, I headed out into the wilderness to do a bit of farming, as I hadn't really done much of that so far, and I was getting myself some nitrate powder, which can be combined with coal to make gunpowder. Once I was done with the nitrate, I moved on to iron, which was right nearby. And with that, the trailer was finally open, and I was able to get my reward, between a steel shovel or a compound crossbow, and as I already had a compound crossbow, I went for the shovel. I continued farming, getting lead this time, it was time to do another job. I returned to my forge to see that I had 471 bullet tips to be made, so it turned out that that lead farming trip was well worth it. I then saw that I could now make myself the mini bike, but it was kind of expensive. All I needed left to make the chassis was just mechanical parts, so I went out and looted some cars and got an engine, which when scrapped gave me 30 mechanical parts, which was more than plenty. All I needed left for the mini bike was the lead car battery, as I'd managed to get the handlebars from a bundle from the trailer earlier. So instead of trying to get the lead car battery, I went and got this loot drop instead, which did have some decent loot inside. I also claimed another treasure map that I had, so I went and did that as well. And once it was made, I was finally able to make myself the mini bike. And then it was time to test it. I'm just kidding. I needed more clay, so I went and got that instead. I needed the clay so that I could make cobblestone rocks, so that I could upgrade whatever this was that I used in the last old night. And it didn't work very well, did it? Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh, okay. My first idea was just to make the overall thing wider, including the steps and the funnel bit, which is where I would kill them. The idea of the base was to have this funnel area where the zombies would walk into, and then these things which would block them, such as the bars. And I can't exactly take credit for this base design as I saw it in a video from a guy called Is Preville, and I'll leave a link to his video in the description as he's the guy that came up with the design and I just remembered watching it, so I'm copying it basically. And the base came with many cool features, such as these bars at the top so that you could shoot the birds when they started attacking, and bars on the side to stop them from flying in. And after a little bit of work, I'd finally finished upgrading it all to the wood quality. But I wanted better, so I used the cobblestone rocks that I'd been crafting to upgrade it to the cobblestone tier. You guys have come a bit early, you know? It's not a hard night yet. One of the features of this design was the wooden hatch doors, acting as a failsafe mechanism so that if the zombies breached the first wall, I could run back, deploy a couple more doors and I'd be safe once again. I had the horde base now fully designed and built, it was time to head back to base to get ready myself. Such as getting all the ammo I had and popping to the trailer to get any more ammo that I needed. Then I headed on over to the base and waited for the zombies to spawn in. Here we go. Things started brilliantly until I found there was one small design flaw with this base. Stop attacking that and come here. Ah, oh, I need to fix this. Oh, that's broken. And then it all seemed to be over by just 1am. I think that worked quite well. Other than this. I'm going to have to knock it back up one. 
I immediately moved on from Horde Knight and spent day 15 by doing a few jobs. With that third mission done, I now had to wait till morning for the trailer to open. So instead, I took my mini bike out for the first time and went off to the desert to try and get one material. I happened to spot a trader, so I went inside and see what he had in store. And he had what I came to the desert to get, gas. But I was planning on mining it, but I used this opportunity to buy some and save some time. But I didn't want to just buy some, so I spotted an oil vein and began mining. Once I was dehydrated and hungry, I decided to call it quits on the mining and quickly found a supply shop nearby which I went and looted. And I was finally able to get to Trader Gen now that it opened, and I'd gotten a pump shotgun for a reward for the mission that I did last night. Incredible. And what better place to test out my new shotgun by taking on another job. Maybe it wasn't the best place to test out the shotgun, as I ended up using my club for the majority of it. But nevertheless, the job was done. But by the time I'd finished, the trader had closed, so I had to wait it out. And in the meantime, I decided to get ahead and start farming by making farm plot blocks. But I needed rotten flesh to make them. So I began sneaking into the nearby houses and into the kitchens and rummaging about to try and find myself some rotten flesh. And after going through a few different houses, it was finally on the third house that I searched that I got the tenth bit of rotten flesh and I was able to make one single farm plot block. But I was struggling to find many, so instead I went to the trailer to get my reward for the job that I'd just done the day before. Easy money. What is that sound? What? No! It's the big fat guy walking upstairs! <laughs> what? I'm taking a salmon, so that's probably stupid, but. Ooh! Oh, Desert Eagle. Although it's called Desert Vulture. Oh, I'm taking a deagle. Special jobs. Is that to the... Yeah. Oh, let's go. It's a... Oh, it's tier six. <laughs> we got a deagle. Let's go. If you couldn't tell, I have a special affection for the desert eagle. Or the desert vulture, as it's called in Seven Days to Die. As I used to love this gun back in Black Ops 2, a game that I used to play loads in my childhood. I did manage in all my farming fiasco to place one farm plot block down and a yucca plant on top for that to grow as they're quite useful for smoothies and drinks and stuff in this game. But I wasn't sure it was the right time to expand my small farm. I'll probably do this later. Whilst I waited for the trailer to open up, I harvested up some cars to get some basic materials and then I entered the trailer at 7am to do my first job, a tier 5 one at St. Moe's Cathedral. I was definitely starting to notice the new tier of difficulty, as this is the second last tier available, but luckily my shotgun was making it fairly easy. Okay, this is definitely tier 5. Oh, this is... Ow. This is tough. Ow. Okay, okay, yep. This, this is quite bad. Oh, it's done. Let's go! The tier fives may have been harder, but the rewards are also better, as I had a chainsaw or the robotic drone, and I went for the robotic drone. I now had a good shotgun, a good pistol, but I was still using a pipe machine gun, so I wanted to upgrade that with an AK-47, but I didn't exactly know how to get the machine gun parts, as they can't be crafted. So I went over to the trader to see if she had any for sale, and she did. She had three, which is all I needed. And a minute later, it was crafted. I transferred the mods from my pipe machine gun over to it, but I did want to make a red dot sight for it. And soon later, I had a brand new AK-47. I thought it was time to start becoming self-sufficient with food, as I looked at this meat stew recipe, and I realised I had quite a lot of the ingredients already from just general looting. Yet somehow, I had no meat at all, so it was time to go out and get some. It was midnight when I decided to do this, and it was quite dark and I was struggling to see, but I finally killed a deer which gave me a lot of meat, then a bunny, then a chicken, and a snake. Oh, he's got Crucible. It's 15k! But I bought it anyway, as you kind of need it to mass produce forged steel later on. I took this opportunity being so far north to head up into the wasteland for the very first time, as I still wanted to get rotten flesh to make the farm plot blocks, 
and I'd found out that rotten flesh was dropped a lot by bears, dogs and the vultures here. And it wasn't long into the trip that I found a rotten dog and I was able to kill it and get rotten flesh. I then found a bear which gave me a load. But after spending a few hours in the wasteland, I decided it was time to leave. Oh, that's one! What? It was just it was just hiding in a tree? Back at base, I finally had enough raw meat from that little journey to make the meat stew, as well as storing my 400 plus rotten flesh. But to finish making the farm plot blocks, I had to get a lot of clay as each one cost 100. And after not so long, I was able to make 25 farm plot blocks. And once the blocks were built, I began placing them down and placing the seeds. I placed potato, aloe vera, corn, goldenrod flowers, pumpkin and coffee, mushrooms and blueberries. I decided to leave them and let them grow as I headed out to do another tier 5 mission. I had somehow racked up quite a big hoard outside of this job whilst I was doing it, so I had to quickly take care of them before heading back to the trader. And boy was I glad I did this job, as I was rewarded with an M60 machine gun at tier 5. Ooh, that's some good ammo, that. I finished this tier 5 job by 4pm, which meant I had plenty of time to get over to the trader and then over to the horde base ready for horde 9. A rocket launcher? Damn! Yeah, I chose the impact driver. I don't know why. I quickly stopped off at base to resupply the ammo and then headed off towards the horde base. Oh, I forgot to fix that front panel. Right. Despite forgetting to fix the wall, it actually made things quite easy as they kept getting stuck there, which made them easy targets to hit. Yes. And just like that, the third horde night was over, and it was super easy. I think my guns may have been too good for the time that it was, as I barely took any damage, barely used any ammo, and my whole base was still intact. I popped back to base and deposited all the loot that I'd got from all the dead bodies. And it was now that my yucca plant had finished growing and I was able to harvest it and get 6 yucca fruits and a single seed. And with 6 yucca fruits that meant I could make 6 yucca juices. Only if I had 6 waters, so I made 5. But now it was time to move on and do another job. Oh that's a lot of them. Oh and it's night time they're quick as well. How's that one? Like, just there? Out? Whoa! What? What happened? Oh, uh, uh, that explosion's killed everything. <laughs> After a quick loot of all the things, I headed off back to base. The next job I accepted was the Shotgun Messiah Factory. And I say it like that because this job is huge. I've done it a couple times before and I got lost. And it's just difficult, but we're gonna go for it. Can't lie, this is getting tough already. And as I mentioned before, I was beginning to get lost already, as I went through an exit, but that must be just an actual exit. I eventually found the correct way and continued my way through the shotgun maze factory. Hello, big boy. Been bad. Oh, ow. Oh, oh, I didn't see the one behind me. Oh, I've got an infection. Oh. What? What? Oh, 
Oh no. Oh, I've, I've broke my leg, I think. Oh, I've got an infection, headache, and I've broke my leg. Oh no. I'm gonna have to use a bit of genius to get back up. I used building blocks to jump my way back up to the top, but this also meant that the broken leg timer would increase with every single jump. I managed to get to what I thought would be the final board, and things were going well, until things like this happened, which damaged my health even more, and I didn't have much anyway. I was able to kill the final few zombies, and the shotgun messiah maze factory was cleared, and now it was time to loot up. And despite clearing the factory, I did end up missing the satchel that I was supposed to get, so I had to dig my way back in and collect it on top of this elevator. I then had to dig myself out again as I couldn't be bothered walking the entire route back as I did have a broken leg. I got to my bike and I was now able to begin the long ride back to home. Once there I immediately put a cast on to fix the broken leg and then went into the trailer to get my reward, which was an M60 machine gun at a worse level than what I already had. I also then ended up buying myself a couple more water G filters. With the G filters that I just bought from the trader, I went out to get the scrap polymers to make the rest of them, but I needed a lot and each tire doesn't really give you that much. I also ended up finding this supply drop whilst I was out and about looking for tires. And it was only now that I realised that my little farm that I had out back had probably finished growing by now. And it had, and <laughs> it looked quite good. So now it was time to start harvesting them all up. I then finished up day 25 by going out to farm some coal. And by the time that I decided to call it quits on farming coal, I'd amassed almost 7,000 pieces of it. So then I moved on to farming nitrate. But I was only able to get 4,500 of this as the pick was about to break. With all the coal and nitrate powder that I had just farmed, I was able to make 4,500 pieces of gunpowder. I'd also planted these trees across my base a while ago, and they were now fully grown, so it was time to start farming them to get all the wood. And as I struck the last one, I collected 3,000 pieces of wood, but I did have to replant the saplings. But with that done, it was time to take on my next job, the mortician's house. Having assumed the job was now over after killing what I thought was the last wave of zombies, I opened up the infested chest, the lock chest, and the rest of the loot, before then going out on top of the house to kill the remaining zombies which I'd missed. For clearing the mortician's house with the dead bodies that the mortician probably worked on in his previous life, I was rewarded with a steel sledgehammer, which was a massive upgrade in the melee damage aspect to the steel club which I was using, which was already doing quite a lot of damage already. And with it nearly being Horde Knight again, I took some time to go prepare the Horde Knight base. And I began by destroying the first layer of the Horde Knight base, as I needed to push the walls back one more so that the zombies wouldn't get stuck, as they had been doing for the previous two Horde Knights. But doing so seemed to create my own little mini Horde Knight, as a couple zombies rolled up to my location, and what better time to try out my new steel sledgehammer. I destroyed the final concrete block which was out of place, and then filled in the new front layer of the Horde Knight base. I then spent some time upgrading the blocks to cobblestone quality to match the rest of the base. With the base fully upgraded to cobblestone, I went back to base and made myself a cement mixer so that I could begin producing cement to upgrade the base further down the line. Bro, what? Why, why are they here? Horde Knight's not started yet. Bro, what? What's happening? Before Horde Knight actually started, I had some time to kill, and a supply dropper fell down nearby, so I went out after that. And the loot wasn't too bad either, as I got a scrap armour bundle. But now it was time to go set up in the base. I decided to try out the new steel sledgehammer I'd gotten, but its attacks were just too slow so I quickly reverted back to a gun. And thankfully the updates that I made to the base had fixed the issue that I was having when those zombies were getting stuck, as they were now freely coming towards me to their death. Oh, there's the big guy, and the big guy's gone. The little accent I just had actually proved to be in my favour, as I could shoot the zombies at the bottom of the stairs before they even got to me. And one thing I did notice with this Horde Knight is I was definitely racking up the yellow body bags full of loot a lot more this time. Ow. Ow, that hurt. Oh, bad time to reload. Right, eat the honey, get rid of the infection. This should be the final few. Ow. Right, please. Okay, thank you. Right, let's heal up quickly. 
Should be like a few more, I reckon. One. Oh, maybe that's the last guy here. Oh, no, there's two more. Five hundred. Dang, let's craft them. The farming that I've been doing over the previous 28 days had been incredible, as I had thousands of gunpowder and all that forged steel to be made. But I had a while till all that steel was made, so I went out to do another tier 5 mission in the city. Hmm, it's only level 4 though. It's better than my axe. Let's take it. <gasps> oh no! Or an M60 Legendary. I don't know what that means. Legendary bundle. What's a legendary bundle? I'm taking the gyrocopter. I've never had it before. Do you have any jobs? We always need someone to handle the top. Hurry back soon, and I'll have a nice reward for you. Vehicle parts. Gyro. I need the accessories. No. Despite getting that gyrocopter bundle, getting the actual gyrocopter itself would have to wait for another day as I still need the accessories part. With it being just five days to the next horde night, I decided to go crazy with the missions to get as much ammo and money as possible. <laughs> My first tier six mission done, I was rewarded with some decent loot like this shotgun which I'm never going to use as my current one is much better and a lot of ammo. One of the things I did get was this treasure map which I read and then headed out to go and get. Hmm, more ammo, we'll take it. And with it now being midnight and unable to get into a trader I went out to farm some lead instead of opening a job. The vein of lead that I was farming also led into a nitrate one so I got some of that as well. I then went further north into the wasteland to check out what the trader in the wasteland had. I got nothing, man. That's enough chit -chat for me today. At least it wasn't a complete waste of a trip as a supply drop landed nearby. I then went back to Trader Gen and selected my next job, which unfortunately for me was 3.7 kilometers away. So I popped back to base and got myself all the healing stuff that I would need and a lot of ammo. I then set off the Dishong Tower 3.7 kilometers away hoping to reach it by 4am so that the nighttime buff would no longer apply to the zombies. By the time I reached it, it was closer to 5am on day 32, but nonetheless, it was still nice and early. Why am I getting attacked from outside? I've only just started. And these aren't actual zombies from the job. Oh, there's a second. Okay. Right, that's done. Right, now we can actually start with the Dishong Tower. Hello. Oh. Oh, it's a green. It's a green. It's a green. Get it. Oh, oh, and just look at the top of the screen. There's so much red. Ow. Oh, there's so many. Oh, ow. Hello. You got right in my face. That would, that, that's a crazy start. That was crazy. Oh, hello, big boy. Oh, hello. Oh, that's a lot of greens. Oh, why so many greenies? Damn. Oh wait, oh those are the yucca plants. Oh, we'll farm a couple of those up, that's neat. Okay. And they've all fallen, what? Why are there just so many in this one room? I'm not sure if it was planned for them all to fall through the ground, but I didn't want to go down with them. So I ended up breaking this floor piece and ended up shooting them up here to kill them. Oh, OK, 
Okay, I think they're coming now. Run. This is gonna be chaos. I need them to wait. I thought they were gonna try to go through the hole there, but if they wanna break the door, it's okay. As soon as I get that first hole in the door, I need to start shooting. Yep. Kill him. Get him. Oh. The no there's just so much noise. Get him. Oh, doors broke. Doors broke. Shoot. Shoot. Oh, oh no. Oh, three big guys. Alright, use the shotgun a bit. Oh no. Right, close the door, close it. Nice. I need to reload quickly. Get him. Bro, those vultures are making such a sound. Oh. Wait, are we done? Only the vultures left. Get wrecked. One more. Where is it? Eh? Where's the last one? Why? I ended up ignoring this final zombie as I didn't know where it was and got myself into the loot. And the loot was incredible. Especially this infested chest which gave me so much ammo. And it's a good thing I bought my robotic drone as my inventory was full and I hadn't even finished looting yet. But it turned out that I'd missed another zombie as well, as it was an orange circle indicating that I had another area to clear in the building. It was just... it was just one. Weird. I then broke my way out the tower as, well, I couldn't be bothered walking down the stairs, and then used these pogo stick jumping methods to get my way down. And then it was time to drive the 3.7 kilometers back to Trader. I finally got back to the Trader the following day at 8pm and got an M60 tier 6 gun in my reward, which was a small upgrade on my tier 5. I stored all my new ammo which was now too much my single storage box to contain, so I spent some time at base farming up more gunpowder to resupply the ammo I just used and make even more and more storage for my ammo as I had actually just run out. I made myself another forge so that I could begin smelting rocks down into cement and then later further upgrade my horde base, but then I was attacked by a group of wandering zombies who were kind of weak. I'd originally been on my way to get clay using an auger to help make cement back at base. I was then distracted by a supply drop landing nearby, so I went after that. Meh, it's okay. Ooh, vehicle books, I'll take that though. I decided to test out my auger though, as there was a coal deposit right nearby, and I could always do with some more, which I went and then got a measly 5,000 of it. There also happened to be a nitrate vein nearby as well, so I got some more of that too. I got back to base and threw the lead in the forge, I made some more gunpowder with the coal and nitrate I had just got. With all the gunpowder, I was turning it into AP 7.62 ammo, which I believe is a stronger version of the current assault rifle ammo that I was using. I went over to the trader and accepted my next job. Three kilometers away, but I had no time as it was horde night tonight, and over I went to my horde base. It was on my fifth horde night that I finally got the vultures to start spawning, which meant my little neat feature with the bars at the top of the roof would finally come into use. Oh, and it's all over. That was really easy again. From the horde night just gone, I got myself a couple treasure maps which I went out and completed, and then because I was only 1.7 kilometers away, I decided to cycle to my next mission. Dude, what? <laughs> what a stupid zombie.
Let's go. It's the last one. Kaboom. The loot from this job was simply incredible, with all the ammo, guns like an M60 at tier 6 and many different bundles, but now I had to cycle almost 3 kilometers. Fun. I did at least find a supply shop which was nice. I also found up some snow which I didn't realise you could actually get, and snow is used in a different couple recipes such as smoothies, or you can just throw it at zombies, so it's quite nice to have. When I returned to base I had another mass amount of forge still ready to be made. So I popped over to the trader who was selling some more vehicle books which I purchased and I was now at level 50 which meant I'd unlocked the motorcycle and upgrade on my quite pathetic mini bike. But before I could even think about making it, I went and checked my ammo production which was producing loads and I was even able to craft a whole bunch more. I then made myself the motorcycle chassis followed by the handlebars and once they were both done I was able to make the motorcycle itself. And once it was made it was time to take it out for a spin towards the snow to take on my next job. Oh no, what the heck is that? Get him! Bro, this is just a start man, why is there so many? Yo, this is crazy! There's so many! What the hell? Easy. I'm not sure what was better with the job, all the loot or watching those zombies explode. In fact, let's watch them again. On a reel though, the loot was really good. I got a bunch of ammo back and many books which is all I really want at this point. With the loot looted, I broke my way out because I couldn't be bothered walking the route back and left and went back to base. Amazing. Uh, I hope you like your reward. Not particularly, I've had better. 9k dukes, nice day. At base I had a couple zombies, so I cleared them out, but found this. It turned out that I already had a little farm growing out in my garden. Since when did I have this here? Which had corn, blueberries and potatoes, and yet I just never seen it. I spent the rest of day 41 farming up cars to get general materials, but it turns out that police cars can actually have their sirens set off, which attract zombies. And I wish I would have known this, as I brought zero ammo with me to defend myself. All I had was what was with me in my gun already. I headed over to the trader with all my spare guns and expensive stuff like the mini bike and dollars to get a few more dukes and I thought I was getting a really good deal, almost getting 2k per item until I saw what Trader Jim was reselling them for. Uh, you're selling it for 24k. I then spent some time upgrading the horde base a little more, making a couple steel hatches to replace the wooden ones, as I was expecting the horde knight to be a bit more difficult than the last few. Ooh, drink that. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even mean to have that out. Well, I was wrong. The Horde Knight really wasn't too bad. Maybe it's just that my base was too good. Maybe my guns were too good. Or maybe I'm just too good. It is probably one of the first two, to be honest. I say that, but it turns out that they did do a bit of damage to my base. But nothing serious. And it's over. Once it was over, I began to make a lot of concrete mix back at base. As I wanted my base to be undefeatable. Because if I wanted my base to be undefeatable, I needed to upgrade it again. 
but whilst all that crafted, I headed off into town to get the supply drop before I went off to do my next job, up in the wasteland to the Navasgane General Hospital. That was wild. Easy though, they just all bunched up, but man, that was crazy. Crazy jobs give crazy loot, as my ammo supply was soon back up, and I also ended up getting an auto shotgun, which is better than my pump, but not when it's tier one. Mmm, a forgetty Alexa thing. Not got one of those yet before. With one job done, it was time to take on another one. The last sunset nursing home in the desert. Ay ay ay. Why am I flying? What was push what's push me up? Oh sweet. Mm, that's not good. Getting my first death in a while was kind of annoying, more so that it wouldn't have happened if I had just looked below sooner, but that won't stop me from at least getting the good loot from here even if I can't finish the job. And I think we are done. It's a sour wing because I couldn't do the job, but at least I got the loot, man. I quickly got the supply drop nearby and then realised there were loads of yucca plants in the desert, so I began to farm many of them up as well. Those plants that I just farmed were immediately put to use as I crafted 19 yucca smoothies, which I'm led to believe are the best drinks in the game. From those jobs, I also collected a couple treasure maps, which I thought would be smart to go get. And from those I had acquired a couple raw elements which I sold to the trader alongside a pistol and then the next thing you know I had over 90,000 dukes. On day 48 I was back to farming materials though, this time coal, and well I farmed 35,000 pieces of it. But then I changed to get nitrate and by the end of the day I had amassed almost 20,000 of that. And well let's say I could make a lot of gunpowder now, almost 20,000. But I wanted more, so I went out to get even more nitrate, but before I knew it, it was horde night again. So wherever I went to my horde base, ready to go. Alright, let's go. Oh, already got a bird. Uh, just seen that one of my walls have been should have been repaired. I think they may break that. I just can't believe how easy that was to be honest. I was certain one of those walls would break. <laughs> Yet we're, we're still here. To go over the whole night I went out to farm lead and that's all I did for day 50. The next day I used this forgetty Alexa thing and I found as I wanted to rearrange my points, mainly putting some points in the grease monkey stat so that I could get more vehicle books and unlock the 4x4 car and the gyrocopter, which I was so desperately after. So with that done, I headed over to the Cracker Book store in the city and began looting the many books inside, and after looting the first floor, I was just one book away from the 4x4. But there was still one more room to loot, and luckily this final room gave me the final book I needed to unlock the 4x4. I then spent the rest of the day scrapping cars to get some more loot that I'll probably need later. But whilst doing all of this, I'd unlock the stack of gunpowder, which I started crafting instead of single ones, as I think it's better to do so. But, Christ, that's going to take forever. I then headed out to the desert, as I was starting to run low on gasoline. 
One eternity later. Damn, that's a big crater. And all that gave me around 30k oil? 15 stacks of 5k, okay, not bad. But I did have to make a new chemistry bench to craft it, as my other one was still occupied with all the gunpowder, and it would be for a while. So whilst they all crafted, off I went back to the desert, as a supply drop had landed whilst I was getting all the oil, which I forgot to collect. Mmm, that's not bad, I guess. An AK bundle. I got back to base and began making the 4x4 parts, before making the 4x4 itself. I spent some more time making better drinks and stuff and then my 4x4 was ready and this is the first time I've ever actually made one or driven one. So let's give it a little test ride. And what better way to test it out by taking it into the snow and to the smaller Cracker Book Cafe which ended up giving me another 17 vehicle books. I found another big Cracker Book store and began losing and once it was done I had many different books but more importantly I had 16 vehicle books which meant that I had now reached level 100 in the vehicles and unlocked my goal since day 1, the gyrocopter. With it now being day 56, with that being a horde night and the gyrocopter busy being crafted, I headed over to my horde base to begin repairing as it had took a bit of damage from the last horde night and this time I was beginning on upgrading it to concrete. As I had been slowly crafting some over the last 10 days or so, I even managed to get the stairs and the front of the base up to steel quality as I'd also been crafting so much of that recently as well. As I returned to my base my copter was built and it was time to take it out. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Oh okay, we gotta take off like a plane. Alright, how do we go up? Uh, oh, there we go. Bro, this is so cool. Right, so we turn by where we are looking. How do I go down? Oh, there we go, got it. I was having a blast with it, but I still hadn't learned how to properly land it yet. But before I knew it, it was almost 10pm, and time to head over to my horde base. Why are you stuck there, mum? I examined my base for any damage and it was basically intact, which was good. I then went and started a new job, taking my gyrocopter out with me for the very first time. Oh, that was a bit of a rough landing. Oh, don't go up there. And well, as it turned to a new day whilst I was doing the job, I kind of forgot to start the new recording. So, well, welcome back to base. At the trader, I finally got the one weapon I'd been missing, a sniper rifle at tier 6. So I started day 59 by destroying my rubbish whole base. I'm just kidding. I just wanted to change the front of it slightly and have the zombies run towards me along a walkway which was a bit longer instead of just going upstairs and immediately meeting me. I extended the walkway quite a bit and managed to actually get it all to steel quality as I just had so much steel lying around. I finished up the day by farming some more iron and some clay so that I could make a crucible which allows you to craft even more steel which I would use on my other forges. I spent some time waiting for that iron to smell and soon popped over to the trader and bought myself a forgetty Alexa. I also began making my own paper so that I had become self sufficient on my own shotgun ammo but before I knew it, it was horde night again. So over I went to my base. The new design to the base was much better at shooting them before they even got close to me. But there was one problem. They started attacking the floor of the base instead of running up sometimes. It seemed they would do this as they ran past as the majority still made it up to the platform section with ease. <gasps> oh, that's the first green one. With that being my first green zombie in any of these horde nights, it at least showed that things were now starting to get a little bit more difficult for my mega base. And it's over. Another successful Horde night. I got back to base and refilled my own ammo supply and then headed out on my gyrocopter south to do a mission that I hadn't done before, the Red Mesa Compound. 
I didn't bring shotgun ammo. Boy. That should be then killed. Six, thirteen, eighteen, twenty-four bullets. Oh my god! Oh no! I'm gonna die! No! 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 Oh, switch gun! Mm, no! <sighs> Why did I not bring enough ammo? Do I have any? In oh my god! <sighs> no! And to make things even better, as I jumped down into the compound, a massive horde of zombies followed me in, as well. And I had no weapons on me. What the? I ran with a broken leg, closing every door behind me, and eventually managed to retrieve my stuff. But this was only half the problem solved. I now had to get out with only a shotgun and a broken leg. Eventually the horde that was outside got to me, but thankfully I was on the other side of this metal gate and they were having their own issues. I had to continue moving forwards, but fighting groups of zombies like this was a massive problem. Especially when I had to reload and I couldn't exactly run away with my broken leg. How can I not hit you? Hit it. Reload. Ow. Ow. How can it hit me through a door? But I soldiered on and I needed to get to the final loot room. How on earth have I made it into here, man? This is what I needed though. Look at the ammo. So much. I quickly left and flew back to base so that I could bandage myself up and assess what I'd gotten. And before the end of the day, I'd accepted another job from Jen, which I hoped to actually complete this time. With that paper that I was making the other day, I was turning it into a lot of shotgun ammo, which would come in use later on, but first I had to get the supply job in the snow before going out on a little mining trip. Once that was done, it was time for another job.
This is always the best part, killing so many zombies to get all the good loot. I soon left them and flew back home, but not without my problems. Oh dear, oh no, I'm out of fuel. Um, I need to land somewhere here. I landed down in this random truck stop in the wasteland and continued on foot to the closest trader. I really should have refueled before I left because this is dangerous. Yes, I know it's there. Oh, I didn't know it was that close behind me. Finally, I made it. Right, let's get fuel and let's go. I'm getting good at these Londons, you know. At base, I saw that I had an ungodly amount of gunpowder being made and already you had stored. So I began making bullet casing and tips to turn it all into ammo. I also had been collecting a lot of water so that I could make even more paper and even more shotgun ammo with all that gunpowder before I went and farmed up a little bit more wood which should probably do me for the rest of the challenge. Meet my friend, Mr. Sledgehammer. Oh, there's more of you. Where do these guys keep coming from? I made a quick trip over to Trader Hugh and spent some of my hard earned dukes on AP ammo, gas and some water filters as I needed even more water for glue and paper at base and I was now able to make four more dew collectors and it was a good timing as it was lashing down with rain although I'm not really sure the rain affects the speed of water production but it was now day 70 already which meant another horde night and there was a little bit of work that I wanted to get done on the base but unfortunately I couldn't go too far with the digging as it was almost horde night right let's see how hard this night is And we are done. Nice. Before the night over, I went back to what I started the day before of excavating a layer of dirt around the base so that I could extend its height by one so that it would now be free to and hopefully this would mean that the zombies would stop hitting the base as they ran up to it. And there was a lot of dirt to be dug up as this work went well into the night and into the following day. And it's the last one. Oh, that took so long. With that task taking just so long and being so draining, I had to take a break and went AFK. -okay. And now whilst I wouldn't normally show this in a video, I thought I had to as this happened. What? What? I, I ju I've just got to my computer, I've set to wait for a couple minutes and all hell breaks loose. What has happened? Oh my god, what's this, like an early horde night or something just at my base? What is happening? There's so many of them. How do I get this zombie out? Oh man. I finished up fixing the house and then prepared myself for another job and then set off towards it. And we're here. The Navasgane Correction Centre. I've done this job a few times before. I actually really like this one. This is crazy. Oh, there's so many. Oh my god, man. This is just what I love it though. It's just pure craziness. Run. Oh, I need to reload. One of the reasons why I find this job so fun or easy is that you can use these metal bars to your advantage and avoid getting hit, making killing the many zombies pretty easy. some ammo. I happily take that. Alright, close the door. Oh, oh, they've already got three. Shoot! Oh, they broke the door. Oh, how have they come in this way then? What? What? Run. 
Run, man. Bro, oh, this is so... This is so many! Oh, I really, I need to reload. Oh, there's, and they're all green as well. There's just... Oh, there's chaos. And you're the last one. Done. The loot, man. Oh, an SMG. Oh, I finally got one. Some more ammo. Oh, we take it. We take it. Um, what? Yo, yo. What's this? What? Ow, ow, what? Where are, who are these guys? Oh, I've done the job. The job is done. Why is it? Oh my god, so many. What is happening? These are part of the job. Who are you? Has the job like glitched out or something? And these guys are just respawned. It's no run. Oh my god, what has just happened? Bro, I just heard something explode. Wow. Oh, there's genuinely so many. Wow. Who are, where have these guys come from? <laughs> that was funny though, the police man exploding. I was finally able to leave, and to be honest, I have no clue what that was all about. I cleared all the zombies from the job, and it wasn't Horde Night, it was just chaos. Anyways, off I went to go get a supply shop that landed nearby. Things were only about to get better though, as I got an auto shotgun tier 6 as a reward for the job, and the end of tier reward as well, where I took the ammo bundle. I went off to get this treasure chest that I had a map for, before I went off back into the city to scrap cars to get electric parts, so that I could go back to base and make myself a reflex sight for my new SMG. And doing so made this random wandering orb turn up to my base who I quickly dealt with. I went out on a little trip on my motorbike to the city over from me and to the trader to see what they had and he had a bunch of AP ammo which I bought it all with all my spare dukes. I went further east from this city over to a smaller one which has a special place in my heart as this was the first place I ever went when I started playing this game. I spawned here, I lived here, I worked here and I thrived here. So it was nice to go back. Plus the trader had some stuff which I ended up buying as well. I went round to the other nearby traders buying what I wanted, which was mainly AP 7.62 ammo, and when I returned home and checked out my ammo storage, it was looking pretty good. And the best part was still I had so much more to make, as well as almost a thousand shotgun in the works. I also tried out these grenades, which I had gotten... Uh, what's the point? They don't blow up anything up. And the exact same happened with these timed bombs. But with those boring tests done, I went back to base, picked up a bunch of ammo and headed out to my horde base and began repairing all the damaged blocks and then it was time to sit in and wait for the night to start. This shotgun is just so good. And that's another night done. It's just, it's too easy. My base might genuinely be too good. Oh, wait, why are these guys just stuck attacking there? Weird. With it over, I went back to base to drop off all my loot and went back to starting repairing it, as for some reason, certain blocks ended up taking quite a lot of damage. I was also able to upgrade some of the remaining concrete blocks up to steel, Added a few more stairs to the side so hopefully come the next horde night, the zombies wouldn't get stuck there and would fly more easily. But with that done and many days to go till the next horde night, I decided it was time to do another job down in the snow. I tried to hit those. Oh, I don't think I actually hit any zombies.
Okay, that's a lot. Right, I'm going to try and hit the barrels. Oh, oh, I don't think I killed any. Right, let's go. Mm, I need to load. All right, let's get him. Let's get him. Where's this final zombie? And it's there, okay. Alright, gonna break this down. Nope, not getting stuck up on today. Not bad. Ooh, that's a good amount of ammo, that. And then it was time to leave, but not towards the trader, as I had spotted a supply drop not far away. Yeah, that wasn't worth it. Back to the trader we go. I got myself another SMG, but the rewards weren't really any special anymore, as I had most of the stuff in the game already. I know I've raged about how good my horse base was. Well, I wanted to make it even better. So I packed up all my materials and headed over and began building and upgrading it to steel quality. And here's a little update on the progress. I wonder if any of you can tell me what I'm about to try and make. And it was only by the end of the day that I'd finished putting in the final few touches. The whole idea of this contraption was to make the base automated with shotgun and minigun turrets. The unbeatable hall base had just levelled up to god mode. I set up a battery bank to give all the turrets power, but then it was time to make the base even better and do the exact same on the other side. But for this one, I did have to pop back to base to get all the materials as it was expensive and I was running out. Ooh, okay, we have some visitors. One, two, three, four, any more? No. Okay then, don't come round to my house ever again. I kept going on the base upgrade till I ran out of more materials again and thought that that would be good enough with just concrete, so I left. Yo, who let you in? Oh, that's a green one. Why are there so many zombies coming to my house now? I made it pretty clear last time. You are welcome. I ended the day off by heading into the city to scrap cars for engines to power the battery panks and also ran into a few more groups of zombies. But I was soon then able to finish up the final few pieces of my base upgrade. I thought it was now time to rearrange my stat points though as I had quite a few points into the Grease Monkey perk which was great for helping me get the gyrocopter. But I've got the gyrocopter now so it's probably better to put them points somewhere else like the Daring Adventurer perk, so that I could get more dupes for each job. And it was long after that my base was attacked by another mob, which I had to deal with quickly. And before I knew it, it was day 84. And it was another Horde night. So I got myself a bunch of ammo and settled into my Horde base. And now I know I have just spent the last few days upgrading it with all those turrets, but I hadn't yet filled them with any ammo or powered them. So I wasn't going to use them this night, and I just tackled the Horde night face on with just myself. Why a lot of green zombies on this run? Damn! And that's 4am. We are done. Just gotta kill the remaining few hagglers. And the Horde Knight now done, I thought I was set off to go do a few missions, aiming for the ones which I had yet to do or had failed previously, like the last Sunset Nursing Home. I thought he was behind the wall. How's he under the floor? Right, let's get this loot. Oh, this it's got the assault rifle. I never got this one, and it's tier six. The shame the M60 is just better though. I ended up somehow missing quite a lot of zombies up on the roof and inside, despite following what I thought was the correct path to the loot. So I'm really not sure what happened, as I had ended up missing a lot. 
Right, I'm finally done. I just don't get how I've missed so many. I then flew back to base only to get a chainsaw for my hard work. But before the end of the night, I had another mini horde attack my base. And if anyone knows why this keeps happening, please let me know, as it's almost been a daily occurrence at this point. I went over to the trader and bought a supply of AP 7.62 ammo, as you can never have enough of it in my opinion. And by saying that, I almost had a full chest of it. Why are there so many zombies at my base again? It's daily, I swear. I left base to get this supply shop, but once again, back at base, more zombies arrived, which meant it was now happening by daily. What's going on? It's happened again. I headed into the snow to take a break from the zombies at my base and to try and get some blueberries, as they apparently spawn in the wild here. I didn't find any though, so instead I just had some fun, threw some snowballs at things. Oh, get me in face kind of way I'm hitting these trick shots. And suddenly it was day 91 and horde night again. So I went over to repair the base before it started. Back at base I took so much shotgun ammo and 9mm ammo to fill up the turrets as tonight's horde night would be the one. It would be the one where I'd finally use my turrets for the first time. With time to spare I went over to Mortician's house right nearby and pulled out some zombies to test out my new turret system. Oh, <laughs> this is nice. It got him instantly. Right, let's get the second one. Oh good. Oh wait, he's still alive? Oh, not any longer. Not any longer he isn't. <laughs> These zombies are not ready for tonight. It was go time. As I turned the turrets on, I could already hear them. Oh my god. Why am I even shooting? They're doing all the work for me. It's just incredible. Wait, hang on. Right, I'm at 6,500 kills. I want to see what I end up on at the end of the night. I think the fun ones start to run out of ammo. Zombies are getting a lot closer. I don't think these shotgun turrets have even used yet. Whoa, he got close. Oh, and, and the shotguns do work. That was the best and most fun horde night I've ever done. Being able to sit back and watch my equipment do all the work. What's the ammo like? Oh, okay, still over a stack, not bad. But with it over, off I went to do my next mission. One that I'd never even seen before, the Dr. Karen Higashi residence. Okay, I think we go here. There's gotta be some in here. No? Oh. Oh my god, how does this guy have this underneath his house? Okay, that's a lot. Oh, uh, that's the last one. That wasn't even too bad, really. I actually really enjoyed that mission. Right, let's get out of here. But this wasn't a time to sit around and relax. I wanted one last hurrah of jobs, as day 100 was just around the corner as I took on the Vanity Tower. Whoa, all I did was shoot the car. Ow, stupid vulture. Oh, 
Oh, this might be bad. This might be bad. Get out. Get out. Oh, I'm gonna die. No, I'm gonna die. I've got to rerun this whole thing, man. Oh, here, here we are. Alright, get my stuff. Wait, there's still zombies here? Why are there still zombies here? They're spawn camping my stuff, that's not fair. Oh, it's so disheartening getting this loot, especially when you died and you failed the mission, but that, the loot's still quite nice. Back at base, I started repairing my horde base as I had one big finale planned. But before it could even happen, I went round to one of the traders and spotted a rocket launcher for sale, and I was yet to ever try it, so I went and had to give it a go. Hey, it doesn't even break a tree! What? But with no zombies around to probably test it on, I went over to the horde base to refill all the turrets. And then I went back to base to resupply my own ammo, and I went kinda crazy as I had over 3,500 AP assault rifle ammo. But now it was time to wait for the very last horde night of the 100 days. Alright, let's test out this rocket launcher. Kaboom! Ow! I hit myself! Oh, there's more. There's a few here. Come on. You. Over here, bud. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Um, right, let's do this. I'll go around. Get them all closer together. Go, boom. Hey, how'd you not die? Bonk. I had my fun with the rocket launcher, but now it was time for the wait for the horde night. Well, other than this mini horde coming early. And the reason why this horde night was going to be so special is that I upped the blood moon count to 32 times the amount of zombies, when I believe the default is 8. So we should be getting 4 times as many zombies. It should be pretty chaotic. This, I thought this would be worse actually. But they're not even like there's not that many of them, I think. And I've I've doubled the rate. Or maybe it's just that my turrets are too good. I guess we'll see how it goes later in the uh, in the night when the front turrets start to run out of ammo. Like I don't think my shotgun turrets have been used at all. There. I don't know why, I, I just find it quite nice just listening to all the turrets just shoot, doing their job. I mean, I guess to be fair, we have killed a lot of zombies already, and it's not even mid. Oh, it's not even midnight. What? There's Quite a few green ones. I mean, it is day 98, but what else did I expect? Right, I've, used, I've only used 300 ammo. Try and get those birds. But it's like that. There was like no zombies coming there. For like a few, a few seconds. I just it doesn't seem like there's actually that many more. Oh, 
Hello, policeman. And um, policeman's dead. That was another one. And it's dead as well. I wish they were just all green variants. I think that would make it a bit more challenging. Because right now it is a piece of cake. Quite a few now. It's just it's just too easy. My base is too good. Even when I up the race to double, it's still too easy. Oh, that's okay. That's a lot of zombies there. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa! Oh, the those ones that explode. I've rarely ever get them. I guess it's um, starting to get a little bit more difficult throughout the night then. Right, we're at 1 a.m. Come on, only three more hours. Right, I've used just over 500 ammo already. I wonder how the turrets are doing. I'm going to assume that the front ones, they seem to be running out of ammo now. Zombies are getting a bit closer. Oh yeah, there's so many zombies off on the side. Still stood over there though. They might. Some of them aren't even coming over. Okay, that that almost hit me. Oh, explodey guy. Right, we're gone. There's an or an orange loot bag. I didn't even know there were orange loot bags. I knew there was yellow and blue. Vulture. And uh, goodbye, Vulture. Okay, I've almost used a thousand ammo now. Oh, shotgun's being put to use. Right, any. Oh, we're just over an hour left. Okay, there's still quite a lot of zombies. Those jumpy guys are seem to get past all the the um, SMG turrets. Just quite, quite thankful, quite thankful that I put it, um, the shotguns closer to the where I am. I feel like it makes them be better. Oh, hello again, and the shotguns dealt with you. Close now, just the final 30 minutes. Just trying to get that vulture. Nice. Oh, it's getting quite tiring just shooting all day. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. These zombies are terrible. On five five minutes left. Come on, four, three, two, one, and it's over. 
Just got to kill the remaining few zombies, but at least no more will be spawning. So, um, still quite a few zombies left, though. Oh, my, sh my, my, my gun needs to be repaired. That's how much I, I've shot. But I still had one more night till day 100, so I decided to go for an even bigger and better horde night. And bang, I doubled the zombie account to the max of 64 times on a blood moon. And let's get into it. Let's go. Are they are? Yeah. Ow. Holy. Oh, big guy, big Whoa, 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 whoa. Getting beamed by something. I think I'm starting to lose ammo in the SMGs now. They, um, they seem to be getting through. Oh, that's a lot of green. Bird, 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 bird. Oh, another one. Why are they all there? Get it! Nice. Oh. 
Oh, okay, there's some left. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it's 4 a.m. It's 4 a.m. Oh, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Yo. I can get up now. Is this it? Everyone? One there. Whoa. <laughs> That's rather damaged. I think mean, that's... Yeah, that's... Oh. And, that, and that's us done then. That's the final. Horde Knight. Oh, that is poor. Let me spray this one. Oh, that one there behind us. Screamer. Look at this. 338. Damn. I'm surprised how good of a defense this was. They didn't crack it once. I, I built three, like, safety features. And I didn't even have to use one. Loads of ammo left. Some ammo. Some. Loads. Mm, almost none. Some. None. Probably, what? How many kills have we got? 8,000 kills. That's not bad. 6,000 deaths. Just surprised. Bro, our base was too good. And with that, the 100 days is over. Many zombies were killed. Many Horde Knights were successfully completed. And a few deaths up. We can't ignore those, unfortunately. But I do have one last thing I want to do. Fly to the highest point possible. I guess there's only one thing to do then. But unfortunately, I couldn't get that high as I was originally expecting. Backflip. Goodbye. So much blood, sweat and tears went into this. Well, in-game, obviously. But I put a lot of time into this, a new game for my channel that isn't ARK, and I do hope you enjoyed, and a massive thank you if you made it this far. Just know you are a real one. And if you are here, then why not subscribe and like and leave a comment to help me out, as it does make a difference. And I'll see you all in my next video. And I'll see you then.